Have you ever wondered how Khabib Nurmagomedov became one of the most dominant fighters in UFC history? We've all seen the videos of Khabib wrestling bears as a kid, but there's much more to his training that's led to his amazing 29 and all record. So what are the secrets behind his incredible strength and cardio? In this video, we will explore Khabib's strength and conditioning routine and reveal how you can implement his training methods to improve your own fighting fitness. Khabib used to train twice, sometimes even three times a day for four to five hours combined on at least six days a week. He adopted this rigorous training routine from young age, which likely helped him handle the intense training volume. To be able to sustain this training regime, he also had to nail his recovery. Proper nutrition, quality sleep, and regular naps were key for Habib, or as he described, train, eat, sleep, repeat. Structure, focus, discipline, determination, and dedication were the pillars of his incredible success. For strength and power development, Habib relied on traditional strength training. For example, we see him perform a set of two reps of the barbell bench press. Lifting heavy weights for low reps at moderate training volumes improves the body's ability to recruit and synchronize muscle fibers. It also improves the rate of force development, which boosts power output. While strength training stimulates some hypertrophy, athletes typically gain less muscle compared to moderate rep ranges and higher training volumes. This type of training can be good for fighters who want to get stronger without gaining much weight. Heavier lifts do, however, place significant stress on the central nervous system. This should be considered when writing a strength and conditioning program for fighters who often perform a lot of high intensity technical training, which also taxes the CNS. While it's important to train hard, it's also crucial to recover smart to avoid overtraining, illnesses and injuries. And speaking of injuries, we also see Khabib perform plyometric exercises, which are known to boost power and proprioception, but they are also often used to restore balance and coordination after injuries. Khabib suffered two severe knee injuries when he tore his meniscus in 2014 and his ACL in 2015. Some of Khabib's plyometric training might have been done in the later stages of his knee injury rehabilitation. He also struggled with back pain throughout his career, which led to another surgery in 2017. In fact, Khabib went as far as saying that his biggest enemies weren't the other fighters in the UFC, but injuries because he trained so hard. Khabib was five years old when he first performed hill sprints, a practice that he carried through all the way into his professional MMA career. He also used the assault bike, rowing machine and swimming as part of his conditioning routine. These methods are easier on the joints compared to sprints and might have been his preferred conditioning tools after his knee injuries. To improve his muscular endurance, Khabib performed bodyweight and resistance band exercises at high reps and intensities. Often these exercises would be combined in circuits. We also see him and his team train with rocks in the mountains of Dagestan. While some of these training methods may look improvised and unconventional, I believe that there was a method to the madness. Khabib's father, Abdulmanab, was a military veteran with a degree in accounting who then became head coach to an army of successful MMA fighters. It's hard to believe that he would have left their strength and conditioning to chance. Russian scientists and coaches have been pioneers in exercise science for decades. Russia led the way with concepts like training periodization, plyometric training, or kettlebells. So while Khabib and his team were lifting rocks, I don't believe that they lived underneath one. I'm sure that a lot of the exercise science would have also reached the mountains of Dagestan. And speaking of mountains, from his teenage years, Khabib would spend three to four months each year training in the mountains of Dagestan. No TV, no Wi-Fi, not even a shower. After their training, the fighters had to bathe in ice cold spring water. Khabib described the tough conditions and scarcity during this time as his most powerful internal engine. In the mountains of Dagestan, Khabib performed sprint intervals, circuit training, and wrestling drills at almost 2,000 meters above sea level. This likely contributed to his amazing cardio. At high altitudes, the air is thinner, meaning there's less oxygen available. To compensate for the low oxygen, the kidneys produce more EPO, a hormone that stimulates the production of red blood cells. More red blood cells lead to a greater oxygen-carrying capacity. Training at altitude can also improve the density of mitochondria in the muscle and their ability to utilize oxygen. The body also becomes better at buffering lactate. This means that an athlete can maintain higher training intensities for longer. Training at altitude and in rough conditions for multiple months each year would have also added to Khabib's great mental toughness and resilience. Some of the research on the physiological benefits of altitude training is inconclusive. Not everyone seems to benefit from training at altitude, but Habib's father Abdulmanab described how his fighters were significantly fitter at sea level after returning from the mountains. Generally, moderate elevation of 2,000 to 2,500 meters seems to be superior to higher altitudes in stimulating positive adaptations without the negative downsides. Some researchers claim that the live high, train low method is the best way to still reap the physiological benefits of living at altitude 
while also being able to maintain the usual training intensity and volume as well as strength and power. Training at sea level also allows for better oxygen delivery to the muscles which can boost recovery between training sessions. This could be crucial if you have multiple training sessions a day or intense training blocks. We don't know the details of Khabib's altitude training protocol and whether or not he also trained at sea level, but we do know that he's shown to be very smart and calculated with his training. For example, he came to Abu Dhabi one month before his last UFC fight to acclimatize and overcome the jet lag. Meanwhile, Justin Gaethje only arrived one week before the fight. Khabib himself believes that that was one of the main reasons why Gaethje fatigued so quickly in the fight. And there's one more key component that laid the foundation for Khabib's incredible success. Khabib first stepped on the wrestling mat when he was three or four years old. He had almost 30 years of experience in freestyle wrestling, Greco-Roman wrestling, judo, combat sambo and MMA. Especially wrestling is known for the grueling training and high energy demands. Elite wrestlers possess high anaerobic power and capacity as well as muscular endurance. They've also shown VO2 max levels similar to those of endurance athletes. Khabib's opponents often described his incredible squeeze and ground control. This was likely a result of both technical mastery but also great isometric strength and muscular endurance from decades of grappling. Khabib himself has stated that decades of hard wrestling rounds and sparring laid the foundation for his success, not just physically, but also mentally. Watch this video next to discover the secrets behind Alexander Volkanovsky's incredible strength and cardio. I've broken down the training methods that Volk has shared on his YouTube channel over the years. Drop a like and comment if you enjoyed this video and let me know which fighter I should analyze next. As always, train hard, recover smart and fight easy.